Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 of my favorite Miramax movies. I just did Touchdown Pictures. Let's do Miramax now. Another studio that doesn't really make movies, but they should because they made a lot of quality, damn fucking good movies. Again, it's a studio that aligned with other studios like Paramount, Universal, uh, and I even think 20th Century Fox. And I could have done a tier ranking, but again, there was just a lot I could have done. A lot, a lot of movies and stuff. And I have other ideas for tier rankings in the next little bit. So, top 10 list. Uh, I'm going to be doing Universal after this. And that'll be a top 20 list because it's just a lot more Universal movies. So, top 10. Personal favorite Miramax movies, in my opinion. And as always, for a top 10 list, you got to have your... I know, that was terrible. Anyways, honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Scary Movie, Reservoir Dogs, Sin City, The Gentleman, Tropic Thunder, Kill Bill Volume 1 and Volume 2, and The Ice Storm, directed by Ang Lee. All quality films. Quality shit. Good stuff. Couldn't make the top 10 list. What did make my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is Kevin Smith's directorial debut of Clerks. Clerks is a great movie. Despite Kevin Smith, well, not making really anything that great lately. Clerks there was a disappointment, I'm sorry. But um, I think this is a fantastic movie. It's also got a great story to it, not just the movie of making of the movie. It's just an inspirational story for all filmmakers. But this is just a great independent comedy movie. It's so simple. It's just about two guys working on a day where they just don't want to work and it's just them slacking and talking and just chilling it's just about hanging out at a convenience store for the day it's so simple and so perfect and it just works it's funny it's just it's so low budget but that's what makes it feel so great and so timeless because any amateur filmmaker can just understand and appreciate it and it still holds up it's funny it's enjoyable you love the characters and you love the conversations they had and just you love Dante and Randall and you love Jan and Bob and you just want to be there at the quick stop hanging out with them and smoking weed at least I do at least I want to play hockey on the roof god I've always wanted to do that <laughs> at my work <laughs> uh but yeah quirks it's great uh number nine is the I think this is the only Studio Ghibli movie by Miramax Princess Monoke. Princess Mononoke is uh, directed by Hayao Miyazaki, one of Miyazaki's best movies. I'm excited for his new one coming out this year. His last movie, for that a few times, this was supposed to be his last movie. The Wind Rises was supposed to be his last movie. When will his last movie be? <laughs> Princess Mononoke is a fantastic story. It's a great environmental story. It's a great action adventure story. It's probably his most darkest and brutal story, but it's definitely the story he was very willing to tell about environment and about nature and about evil and what what it means to be evil and what does evil mean to others and stuff. Uh, I love the characters. I love Ashitaka as a character. I love Lady Adoshi. She's a great uh, sort of villain, sort of villain. Mini Driver does a great job. Uh, even Princess Monoke herself, she's a good character. I love Billy Bob Thornton's character too. Like, there's not like a distinct villain. There's just selfish people and people thinking they're doing the right thing, but they're not at all doing the right thing. It's 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 an interesting story. It's also really violent. It's the only Miyazaki movie that is very shockingly violent, and I love it. It's great, and yeah, definitely one of his best. All right, number eight is one of my favorite superhero movies, The Crow. Brendan Lee, The Crow, what a great film. Uh, this It's such a sad movie to watch because it's just it's so much potential you see from Bruce Lee's son, Brandon. Like, he's so good in this movie, so fucking badass, and just such a cool character he plays, such a good concept and idea for a film. And I love the whole world of The Crow and how dark and it's during Devil's Night and stuff. I love it. It's so great. The cinematography, production, just, it's so great. The soundtrack is like heavy, bleak, heavy metal soundtrack is so good. And Brandon Lee is just milking every scene and I love it. And it's, yeah, I always love, I, I always love The Crow. And every time I think of it, I just think of Brandon Lee with the makeup going, boo. <laughs> so good, so good. All right, number seven. No, number seven is the Coen Brothers' uh, No Country for Old Men. No Country for Old Men is such a brutal, gritty film. 
definitely one of their best films. I still think Big Lebowski and Miller's Crossing are my favorites, but this is a very close right up there with them. Uh, uh, Anton Sugar is one of the great baddies. Uh, uh, what's his name? Javier Bardem does an immaculate job. I also love Tommy Lee Jones and Josh Brolin in this movie. I love that there's like no music to it's all sound and quiet. It makes the movie so much more intense and so more so much more atmospheric and really gets, puts you into this scenario, puts you into this world, puts you into all the thrills of what's happening through the lack of music it's so good the acting is just top notch and it's just a great modern western also a very good thriller so yeah no catch for romance is a fucking classic man uh all right number six true romance uh tony scott and quentin tarantino uh a double team that you just never expect man and it's very much a tarantino and tony scott movie the dialogue is super tarantino and the style and just the look of it and how blue and just the color coding. It's such a Tony Scott movie. You could tell this was made by Tony Scott and written by Tarantino. And it works beautifully. I love this movie. I love the love story. This really fucked up love story between Christian Slater and Patricia Arquette. I love the single performances. Like the every... Like, all my favorite characters in this movie are all, like, very small characters. Like, like Brad Pitt is this stoner called Floyd. You have Christopher Walken as this mob boss in one scene. You got uh, Gary Oldman as Drexel, this guy with dreadlocks. And he's, he's a pimp and stuff. You got James Gandolfini as his hitman. Like, every, like, the best characters are all in these, like, little scenes. And it's mostly the focus of the two main characters and their love story trying to sell his drugs so they can go live a better life and stuff. I, I love this movie. It's so fucked up. It's so f twistedly funny. And it's just an absolute blast from start to finish. It's such a great movie. Yeah, definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. It's so good. Uh, number five, I'm just going to go with... Scream 1 and Scream 2. I'm going with uh, both Scream films because they're both fantastic films. Uh, actually, I actually like Scream 3 and 4. I, I, it's just the new age Scream I'm not a fan of, but Scream 1 and 2, directed by uh, Wes Craven and written by Kevin Williamson, is just so good. Uh, it's, it's a satire of horror, but also being a horror movie at itself. It's just... It's just so well crafted. Wes Craven was just the perfect choice to make this kind of movie. And you got Sidney Prescott. The Sidney Prescott, played by Neff Campbell, is the greatest final girl in all of horror films. Hands down. And just the ghost face killer and the voice calling the victims and killing them is just so iconic. It's just such a 90s nostalgic great slasher films and just they work so beautifully i've always been a scream lover even though the new films suck ass i still will always love the first two scream films and i watch them every halloween season because they're just so fantastic to me anyways moving on uh number four is pulp fiction going back to tarantino now pulp fiction i think is tarantino's best film i think it's his most gritty brutal funniest film probably one of the most best written films uh, Glorious Bastards is so close too, but I love this movie. I love the characters, Vincent, Jules, Marcellus, uh, Butch. I just, I love these characters. Mia, the conversations they have is, is so good. It's funny. Tarantino and his scene is Jimmy is great. It's, it's so weird how it's like, because it's not chronological how the story's told, but it just works so beautifully. It is, I, I always will quote this movie because it's just such a quotable and just such a brutal and funny film that just, it works. There's a reason this is shown in film classes because just how the film is written is just so brilliant and iconic that people will be quoting this movie until the end of time. Royal with cheese. All right, number three is Master and Commander, Far Side of the World. Every time I watch this movie, I love it more and more. Russell Crowe, Paul Bettany, beautiful characters in the story. It's such a great story about this command ship during this wartime. And the whole movie is basically this crew, this captain, his doctor, first officer, and the whole crew on this ship. They're chasing after a ship that attacked them. And that's most of the story. It's about the crew on this ship, the conversations they have with each other. 
And it's also about this relationship about the captain and the doctor, how they have this friendship and respect for each other, even though they have very different opinions on like political stuff and battle strategies and just life in general. But that's where the intrigue in the story comes from between the two characters. One is a commander that believes that hard work and dominance and winning for your country is the most important, but one man is a pacifist and he cares about nature and preserving nature and helping people and saving lives. And the captain is, well, taking lives and stuff because he's a commanding officer that has to do it for his country and for his people. It's honor in that, but there's honor in being a doctor too. That's why they respect each other. Even though they disagree with each other, they both respect because they both have honor in their professions. That is what makes the Miller movie so brilliant. That's the heart and soul of Master and Commander. Also, it's got great battle sequences, beautiful cinematography, probably the best directed Peter Weir film I've seen. Yeah, just every time I watch this movie, I love it more and more. And it's just it's Master and Commander. It's so fucking good. All right, number two. It's my favorite comedy of all time, Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz is my favorite comedy of all time. It's the funniest movie to me. It makes me laugh. It puts a smile on my face. It's the best out of the Cornetto trilogy, and I love the whole Cornetto trilogy. Shot of the Dead, The World's End, both fantastic films, but Hot Fuzz, the chemistry between Simon Pegg and Nick Frost is out of this world. Timothy Dalton as a, a deranged villain is funny. The twist is so great, brilliant, and hilarious as well. The greater good. <laughs> Just it, it, Again, I always say with the comedy, what makes a great comedy is jokes or visual humors that you pick up watching multiple times. If you can watch a comedy film multiple times and always laugh, always find something new in it, that's a very good and well put together comedic film. Like, there's a lot of films I've laughed my ass off watching, but I watch a second and third time and they're just not as funny as what or as rewatchable. But Hot Fuzz is always rewatchable. I've seen this movie over 10 times and I will always laugh, always find something new or something interesting that I've never seen before. It just makes the experience all the more amazing. And just, yeah, it's Hot Fuzz. So good. Number one, Good Will Hunting. Probably Miramax's most known movie is Good Will Hunting. Uh, Gus Van Sant, one of his few good movies. <laughs> Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, this is like brought us to Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, the writing, and just so good. I've talked so much about Goodwill Hunting. I've probably mentioned this movie dozens of times in videos. Everyone knows it's one of my top five favorite films, top ten favorite films of all time. It's the movie that got me in love with cinema. I've always loved movies. My whole childhood, I love movies, but Goodwill Hunting is what made me like want to write stuff and make me explore different types of films that I'm just not not used to. Like, when I was a kid, I always loved sci-fi, action, fantasy, and the occasional crude comedy. But Good Will Hunting introduced me to, like, powerful, dramatic films about humanistic stories, and it got me to explore more elements of film, and that's why Good Will Hunting is one of my favorite films of all time. And, yeah, it's the best movie Miramax has done, in my opinion. So yeah, that was my top 10 favorite Miramax movies. Let me know in the comment section below. Please tell me what are your top 10 favorite movies made by Miramax. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to the channel and join the duck side.